It's hard to imagine that 20 years ago, Rwanda lost almost 15% of its population due to a genocide. For 100 days in 1994, almost 1 million Tutsis and moderate Hutus were massacred. This means an average of 10,000 deaths per day. Hutus and Tutsis lived in peace until Belgian colonialists started to differentiate them and give privileges to Tutsis, leaving Hutus frustrated. Decades later, as tensions exploded, militant Hutus used machetes and clubs to kill Tutsis. When the genocide was over, Rwanda was left with a giant humanitarian crisis. The country's infrastructure was completely destroyed. Through new centralized leadership, the country started to rebuild. Hutus and Tutsis have managed to coexist in peace. Today, Rwanda is the most densely populated country in Africa. The government has decided to invest in tech initiatives to continue to lift the country out of poverty. The capital, Kigali, is now home to a tech boom. In order to help a new generation of social entrepreneurs, the Rwandan government created an open innovation space, K-Lab. Here, tech enthusiasts gather to develop their startups, swap ideas, and receive mentorship, all for free. One thing that we want is for um, Kigali like, to be like the Silicon Valley of, of Africa. Meet Akaliza, one of K-Lab's mentors. Although Rwandan, she only moved to the country in 2009. I was born in Uganda. When I finished university, I wanted to finally you know, come home. She was first considering moving to better known hubs for tech business in East Africa, like Nairobi or Kampala, but is now happy she chose Rwanda. The market is so young, um, you can start like just about anything and you know, make an immediate impact on society. It's like a new era. I keep saying that one day I'll be able to you know, tell my grandkids like I was in Rwanda at that time. Akaliza takes us on a tour of K-Lab. Yeah. There's so many people in here working. Yeah. Everyone looks really young here. Rwanda in general has a very young population. In fact, almost 80% of Rwandans are under the age of 35. And the tech scene around the world is you know, usually quite young as well, so that's why you get this kind of demographic. The lab projects vary from food ordering apps to apps that help with farming. Nancy Sibo is developing an app called Mobile Cow. It's a, a mobile application that helps farmers to register their cow and after all get information on how to manage their farm. Nancy is a prime example of how young Rwandans are motivated to create solutions for their difficult social problems. As an agriculture student, she came up with the idea when she noticed that farmers suffered financially because of lack of information. We were surprised to hear that Nancy had no tech background. So you learned how to put an app together without any training? No training. Wow. I get some support, uh, one from Akaliza and this from the Kelab. Nancy also holds the title, Miss Geek Rwanda. We wanted to organize a competition for young women um, to showcase like their skills and intelligence I love instead this. of just, you know, the typical you know, who's the prettiest? Do you team? have a sash? Do you have a Miss Geek Rwanda sash? <laughs> where's your, where's your, where's, all, where's your crown? We just gave her a t-shirt. <laughs> just like Nancy, many lab members are social entrepreneurs who are motivated by other things than just money. For me, success is not about earning, it's about giving. Meet Aphrodis, a senior member at K-Lab who recently launched a mobile crowdfunding app to help genocide victims. Aphrodis was nine years old at the time of the genocide. I lost some people in genocide against 1994. So I was somehow motivated to, 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 to help others. After college, Aphrodis met an elderly genocide survivor. With no family left alive and unable to take care of herself, she asked him for 100 Rwandan francs, but he didn't have the money. I had inspiration, so I said, why not? Uh, creating a mobile crowding, a crowdfunding platform. In Rwanda, crowdfunding is a completely new concept. Aphrodis partnered with a grassroots organization, Avega. They provide new homes, clothing, and food for widowed genocide survivors. Aphrodis launched the app in 2014 for the 20th anniversary of the genocide. All of the money raised by the app goes directly to Avega. You dial star six five four. Hash, choose your daily contribution.
To reach as many people as possible, the app is designed to work with SMS or smartphones. And you receive an SMS thanking you for, for, to, for supporting us. Afridis hopes the Enshike app is the first of many crowdfunding ideas to hit Rwanda. I see Rwanda as something like, it will be like a light, a lamp from Africa to, to, to light the whole world. Despite their different backgrounds, there's one thing that the K-Lab members all have in common, a strong sense of purpose and a desire to change Rwanda for the better. The time of the genocide, um, you know, they use the radio to really spread messages of hate, and today technology is being used to spread positive messages. It's one thing that other countries can look to Rwanda for is to see how we've used technology in a, in a positive way. After visiting K-Lab, we wanted to find someone who had benefited from the technology Aphrodis created. We traveled to visit Stephanie, a genocide survivor, whose life has been improved by the Enshike Initiative. First, we're gonna see how she used to live. This is it. A room with a little back area. There's a mosquito net hanging. No running water inside. No toilet. After initially being reluctant, Aphrodis agrees to come with us to meet Stephanie in her new home. Even though the Yashike Initiative is up and running, Aphrodis has never had a face-to-face -face meeting with the people he has helped. You kind of want to be in the background in the shadows. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Because sometimes I want them, they can know that there is someone, somewhere, who is, who is helping you. But to say he's the one, eh? I don't, I don't, sometimes I don't like. It's still very difficult to talk about the genocide. The wound still runs so deep. You mentioned that you don't really want to ask her too many questions. Sometimes they can tell you with their, their, their past, mm -hmm. which is so hard to believe. Mm -hmm. And yes, Stephanie's story is really one of those stories. Walking up to her house, we were both fully aware we would never be able to comprehend the amount of tragedy she's experienced. <laughs> <laughs> this warm and welcoming woman lost seven of her children and her husband in the genocide. After losing her family, she fled to her parents' house in another area. When the war was over, she returned and managed to rebuild her house that had been destroyed. Mm -hmm. Afraid that she might talk to the police about the murder of her family, the neighbors who had participated in the genocide became aggressive. Fearing for her safety, Stephanie had to leave again. She ended up living in the rundown shack we saw before, selling charcoal to get by with barely enough food to feed herself. So it's, it's very emotional because... Mm. And uh, it, it happened too many, many, many uh, like her. Some of them had uh, over 10 children mm -hmm. and they stay all, right. all killed, and the husband, and then the families. The genocide was only is only one part of the story. The aftermath mm. is a whole other part of the equation. Yeah. Stephanie now lives in a new home, donated by Avega, Aphrodis's partner for the Enshike Initiative. Curtains. Uh huh. Uh huh. Chairs with all the things I've been given, all of this. The Enchike app has helped to provide for some of the necessities she needs, like clothes, food, and other staples. I have what to eat, rice, beans. They have even given us clothes. The house has a kitchen, which her previous house lacked, a storage room, and a tank for collecting rainwater. It's the first time she has ever had access to a water supply. She's uh, 59 years old, but this is for my first time.
She's saying she cannot compare. Mm. It's uncomparable. Incomparable. However happy Stephanie might be, Aphrodis is not yet satisfied. To give only something mm, to a person like this, something to eat only, I think I did nothing. I have to do more. I have to give to give back to the community. Mm. Yeah. Thank you so much. We leave the house humbled by the selflessness and humanity we have encountered. Thinking about a John Bunyan quote that Aphrodite told us, you have not lived today unless you have done something for someone who can never repay you.